What is up, YouTube? Yep, this is what my face looks like. Does it match my voice? Maybe, maybe not. Here's the thing. It's official. We have made it big. You know how I know that? Because we got fan mail in the form of an email from one of our first subscribers. I mean, technically, all of you guys are some of our first subscribers. We've only been doing this for, what, two weeks now. Um, his name is Grant. I'm not going to share his last name. Um, he, he emailed us. Uh, he found us on the Facebook. And uh, through that, he found our email address, which, by the way, if you guys want to send fan mail, you have some suggestions, by all means. We're open to suggestions. We're still new. We're still open to suggestions. Um, and uh, this is what he writes. Um, he says, hey, Dalian, spell my name correctly. Props to him. I guess he follows the Twitter page as well. I've really been enjoying your box opening videos, talking about Ikoria, and I love your concept of finding out which types of product has more value. As I watched your mini series about pre release kits and sealed boxes, I went to Walmart for some things I needed and happened upon the impulse buy section. Very dangerous, don't go there, kids. There was a lot of your typical as seen on TV BS, and there was some MTG, some Pokemon, Yu Gi Oh!, and other types of products like that. I typically shop my LGS, but my curiosity has always peaked when I see magic products in a big box store, and a lot of what they have doesn't look exactly like what they offer a typical LGS, which is like this stuff here. You see this stuff in an LGS. Okay, where was I? Um, okay, I want to hear your thoughts examining the value. Is it worth buying random product at a large retailer like Walmart or Target, or should I just stay local and supplement my cardboard crack addiction by buying online? Looking forward to hearing from you. So, of course, being the generous guy I am, I replied. It's also, the store's closed, so I have a lot of time on my hands. I wrote back, hey Grant, I'm glad you're liking the videos. Your support is very much appreciated. If you don't mind, I have a bit of a story uh, for uh, in regards to what you've asked. Um, I went through this huge thing, it's really boring. Uh, he seemed to like it, so I'm gonna give it between us. So I eventually get to the part where I say, I have an idea. With your permission, can I make a video using your question? I can go to Walmart, pick up a few goofy things, and do an unboxing with that set of product. I think it'd be an interesting thing to explore, and I'm sure other viewers had the same question as well. Best regards, then I wrote my name. Uh, he replied, thank you for the quick response. That would be awesome. I can't see, I can't wait to see what you come up with for the video. So the story that I, um, I alluded to um, a long time ago, I played Magic, and like everyone else who's ever played, I eventually got out of the game. Everyone's been through that phase where they're too cool for it, and they have other things that interest them. It happens. Um, so sometime later, um, as around the original Innistrad, uh, my buddy who hadn't played Magic before, really got hyped up, and he started playing at a college. And of course, natural progression of things, he got me into playing, and uh, kind of re-peaked my interest. Um, and he had only purchased online by getting bulk collections through eBay. Um, he went to Walmart, Target, because he really wasn't familiar with the uh, local gaming scene. Um, so I eventually showed him, I showed him the light, I showed him uh, some LGSs that I was familiar with in the area. And that's obviously before we opened the shop here. And um, and I gotta say, we, if we went to Walmart for, for anything, um, we'd end up finding ourselves in that impulse buy section that Grant alluded to. And we'd see those goofy things and we'd pick them up. Uh, and uh, I, I remember opening anything crazy or anything that was just mind blowing. Like, I, well, I can't believe I got this from a random pack at Walmart. I don't really remember too much. I just remember going there and buying things on impulse. So. I don't have a problem with people who frequent LGSs going to Walmart, pick up some product, you know, to each their own. Um, but to Grant's point, he wants to see there really is value because there's been some conspiracy theories, which you've been exploring a lot on this channel so far, it seems to be our thing, that people kind of map the product and get the good packs and they leave the loose ones that have not so great stuff, you know, have bulk rares like Mythos in, in there um, for the rest of the consumers. Um, not saying that OGS is a better product, not saying Walmart does. So Josh and I are gonna run to Walmart real quick. We're gonna pick up a few goofy things we find there. We're gonna open them up, see what we pull, see if it's really worth the value, and uh, we'll keep you posted, so stay tuned. All right, we are back from Walmart, and we got this guy. It's a uh, Battle Bond four pack of boosters. Pretty cool. And we also saw this. Uh, it is a Match of the Gathering, contains two booster packs, a deck, and a storage cube. Pretty nice acrylic. Go for a couple bucks. Um, 
each of these things ran me about $19.98. So I spent 40 bucks on these guys here. And we'll see what we open up. So uh, the four packs of Battle Bond in here, like I said, so divide, divide from 20, that's about five bucks a pack. That's about, that's about right. So, I mean, just from a, a straight um, EV or uh, market value, I should say, that's actually pretty reasonable. Five bucks a pack for a Battle Bond. So we're hoping for obviously double season. Um, like I said, the glass is up there, obviously. Uh, the, the Kenrith tw Twins, the Planeswalkers. The Rain Reactor, I think, is still around the 10. Okay, so as you can see, it's a pretty big box for four packs. I mean, that seems like overkill here. And by the way, in case you guys didn't notice me, I'm sure you did, because it's flipping awesome. Uh, there is the alternate art Muta Vault from uh, John Avon in the background. I kind of took a break from the uh, Harry Potter map from RK Post, so credit to the artist on that. Okay, remember now, these packs from Battle Bond, it's been a while since, uh, since it's been opened. All the rares are going to be in the front because it was meant to be a, a draft set. So, let's see what we get. So, speaking of the twins, I actually got a pretty cool emblem right off the gate, or right out of the gate. And we got a really cool looking forest. And, ooh, luxury suite. So, a nice hit off the top. A nice dual land. These are about 10 bucks a piece. I think these are going to go up. Uh, Commander players absolutely love these. So, I mean, we already got a hit right out of the gate here. Then we got Thrasher Brute, Reckless Scholar, Solemn Offering. Then we get into the commons at this point. We got Pacifism, Dwarven Lightsmith. Pretty cool Drake there. Totally lost. <laughs> All right, let me clean up my mess a little bit. So we already made pretty much half our value back uh, just for this product here. We've only opened one pack. So maybe shopping at Walmart's not such a bad thing. Don't tell a shop owner that. Okay, so we get the Warrior Token. We get the Planes. And we got Stunning Reversal. Uh, we got Mythic. So Stunning Reversal, it's a four drop instant. Next time you would lose the game this turn, instead you draw seven cards, your life total becomes one, then you exile the card. Very nice. So they got Calling uh, Deus, about 50 cents. Morbid Curiosity, Spell Snare, which is always going to be worth about a buck or two. Then flip through the comments, see if anything stands out in terms of straight value. There were a couple uh, comments in the set that were worth about 50 cents to a dollar. Um, I think there's one that's worth two. Can't remember. So I'll obviously go through those as well. Okay, so we got a Mirror token, Mirror token, Mirror Mirror, doesn't matter. And we got Greater Good, another nice little hit there. Uh, Saying between five and ten bucks. So we've already made the money back um, on this janky battle bond box here. So we haven't had any of the partners, not that I can recall anyway. Blood Feud. Oops, probably should get back in the frame so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Let's just talk about Blood Feud. So we've got Kiss of, uh, Kiss of um, uh, Amisha? Amisha? Whatever. I'm not dating her. All right, so moving right along, we're already into pack four. And I say this actually is a pretty uh, pretty good pull. So I don't know if the, uh, the stock guys took a, a night off and mapping the boxes or what happened, but we've gotten some pretty good hits. I mean, all playable uh, rares. And speaking of the partners I brought up a few seconds ago, we got our first uh, double rare pack. And this is why I really love Battle Bond. They're not going to do this uh, too often. I don't know if they'll ever do it again. Uh, where they put two rares in a single pack. And I'm not talking about collector's boxes or anything like that. I'm talking about straight booster packs that are meant to be played with. Um, I mean, getting, getting double rare, legendary creature, um, human type, and a, and a dragon, partner them together. Very cool. Got Bring Down, uh, Claustrophobia, Doom, uh, Doom Traveler. Always a really nice uh, limited play. Basically getting uh, two power, two toughness for one. All right, so that was a hit. I wouldn't say that was a, uh, a pretty uh, aggressive success on that. We didn't get anything ridiculous like a foil or Microsoft Laris or uh, double season, but I mean, straight up value. Um, I'm doing quick math, which is not a strong suit of mine. I would say it's probably about 25, 30 bucks worth of 
for the value for twenty dollars. I mean, you can't beat that. The one thing that kind of throws me off is you have four packs, so it's not exactly like a um, something you, you draft because you usually have three. So that kind of threw me off a little bit. And oh yeah, I got at the shop, so you know, our windows and doors are kind of thin. Okay, so I open up this box here. Okay, seems like a little bit of overkill again for packaging, but whatever. We'll go through the deck last. We'll go through the fun stuff first, the booster packs. Get this garbage out of here. It's a nice uh, little acrylic. I think about 250, 300 cards can fit in there. And by the way, that actually was 100% my fault there. That did not come like that, so I cannot blame Walmart for uh, the X marks spot. Okay, so they gave us a pack of Dominaria. One of my personal favorite sets of recent memory, very well engineered. Um, and Guilds of Ravnica, so we're hoping for a Shockland, obviously. Um, and for Dominaria, we're hoping for preferably a Teferi, but I will settle for a Karn. How many times do you get to hear that in a pack opening video? I'll settle for a Karn. All right, so gonna go through the commons. Okay, right to the uncommons. Oops, did I, did I just put the commons with the with the rares? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. We are professional AF in this channel. Okay, we got Demotion, Creeping Chill, Sinister Sabotage, nice uh, uncommon. And our rare is March of the Multitude. We actually got a Mythic, so we got two Mythics in this opening so far. So we're hoping for it to ferry for our third mythic right again. Okay, we do choose. I mean, these are mapped out Walmart packs, right? Get through the commons. Oh, and we're always nice reprint, always sitting around uh, about 50 cents to a dollar. The only thing I don't like about Dominaria though is because they go with the the white set symbol for common that the uncommon kind of kind of blends in a little bit. Okay, put these in the right pile. I'll learn my lesson. Sentinel of the Pearl Trident for the first Uncommon. Memorial to Glory. Got one. Oh, what? Was, was I missing an Uncommon? No, I wasn't. Okay, there's just one less Uncommon. So maybe that's what they're doing. Not mapping the packs. They're just taking all the Uncommons out of them. What the heck? Okay, Memorial to Glory and... Oh, okay, that's right. That's right. The Legendary's in the back, regardless of if it's a... Uh, rare or uh, an uncommon. Okay, so Gamble Chain Whirler, um, nice 3-3 three, three for 3, and it's all red mana. Goblins always have a pretty reasonable value. It's not, it's not going to be like a $50 card or anything. I mean, come on, it's red. Um, but it should still hold a couple bucks. Goblin decks love it. Um, modern Goblins plays it, because uh, I believe that's a mono red deck. If anyone actually plays mono red and modern <laughs> rookies. Um, but I know Commander loves it. I talk about that a lot on this channel. And Slinvada, the Rising Deep. Uh, nice 88 for 8 Kraken. Oh, Leviathan. Ooh, Mr. Technical over here. With a kicker cost, as Battlefield, if his kick, return all creatures to their owner's hand except for Merfolk, Krakens, Leviathans, Octopi, and Serpents. Very nice. Okay, so I thought I was jipped, but I was not. So, last thing we're going to open here, if I can figure out how plastic works. We have a slow starter deck. No, I have a knife. I want to use it. Hopefully I don't put an axe on the cards. So, let's see what kind of goodies we can pull from this. True Fire Captain. Forest Challenger. Beacon Bolt. Rakdos Freewheeler. Crackling Drake. Acrobat. Demir Spybug. So this probably doesn't feel like a deck. It just feels like this took a whole bunch of double-costed things. Or two colored things and just threw them into a into a pack. Said here, play this, kids. Okay, Golgari uh, Fine Broker, another Goblin Shaman. Okay, a whole bunch of uncommons. Looks like they put the uncommons in the front there. Oops. Okay, a whole bunch of swamps. These even these even feel weird. Hang on. And I know M M19, they did a different type of printing, but it feels like it's like a flatter. It doesn't feel as glossy. But, oops, my phone just said, you're running out battery. Okay, that's fine. But it just feels really matte. It doesn't have the, uh, 
the silky finish we're kind of getting used to. Oh well. Uh, some common green cards. Oh, got some more uncommons. Lava coil worth about 50 cents. Usher Sack Field. Clamor Shaman. Goblin Banneret. Okay, a couple of Guild Gates. Some more planes. Not more, but some planes. Spirit of the Spires. Magistrate of Obligation. Hazda Marshall. Because that's how I pronounce it. Everyone at FNM loves me, by the way. Uh, and a bunch of commons. Okay. Let's see if I can... See anything? Nope. Okay, so... That starter deck was really disappointing. We're gonna see if I can find that garbage again that I threw on the floor. It says one deck. I would say that is very inaccurate. It's a guy who pretends to play magic. Um, I don't really see anything that screams that this is a deck other than here's a bunch of cards. Um, I mean, there's really no red sources, but yet they had how many things that were, were Gruul or Rakdos in them. Um, I, mean, I guess maybe it's banking on people not really knowing how to play the game or else they want to go to Walmart to uh, pick up some goodies. Um, the deck itself, I mean, if someone handed me that and I was working at the store and said, hey, how much store credit would you give me? I would probably offer them a few bucks because I felt bad. Um, I would probably, if you were to add up everything for the cards themselves, assuming that uncommons go for, what, 25 cents a piece, comments at 10 cents, Basic lands we don't feel right charging people for, but we're kind of the same point with guild gates at this point. I mean, there's maybe four dollars worth of value. And that's assuming that you sell it at, you know, uh, TCG median or market, and even even then, it's maybe high estimation. Um, I mean, there were no rares at all in that uh, very loosely awarded deck, and the two booster packs. I mean. I mean, you can't just assume value. Four bucks a piece plus maybe, what, three three bucks for the box. So to say seven plus eight, sorry, seven, no, seven plus another four for the other pack. I mean, you're looking at 11 bucks plus another four for that, looking at 15. I wouldn't say that this is worth the $20 MSRP. Uh, the four booster packs of um, a battle bond, absolutely. Um, I would say that that's worth it. Uh, it's a very cool thing to reopen. Um, I mean, I mean, five dollars a pack is very reasonable for what battle bond was, um, and I'm surprised it's actually not worth more than that. But um, yeah, I mean, individual packs, those little random things like these random janky doodads, pretty cool. Star decks, I mean, or whatever they want to call that thing. I would say maybe not. Um, like I said earlier in the video, is it a cool thing just to pick up if you're at Walmart for a specific thing and happen across these? Yeah, sure, whatever. If you want to spend 20 bucks or whatever they charge for their product, sure, pick it up. I wouldn't go specifically to Walmart or Target or wherever uh, for that sake. I would try to shop at an LGS. I would probably try to pick up the cards you actually need and hopefully you have a, an honorable LGS who isn't mapping boxes or grabbing packs that think have value than leaving the, the crumbs for everybody else. Um, that's all I have today. Uh, thank you, Grant, for submitting the, the question. As I said earlier, um, please, if you guys have suggestions, we're open to it. Email the store at nerdscardsandcomics at gmail.com. Be sure to follow, follow me, not follow, follow me on Twitter at nerdsdalion. That's all one word. Dalion is spelled D-A-L-L-I-O-N. It's like medallion, just leave me out of it. Or uh, you can follow at nerdspgh for all things related to the store. As always, thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And I can say, actually, today we opened something legendary. So for all of you guys sitting at home, cracking packs, bored during uh quarantine or you know living work early using that pto that some stores are giving you guys uh, let's open something legendary together all right stay safe everyone